How much protein should I eat each day? It's one of the most common questions I get whenever I do a live stream, jump on a podcast, or hang out in the carnivore, keto, and low carb community. And honestly, it's one of those questions where if I had a dollar for every time it came up, I'd have enough money to buy a lifetime supply of steak and maybe even a side of bacon. The tricky part is that there isn't a one size fits all answer. But today, I'm going to help you understand why the question matters, who really needs to worry about protein numbers, and how to find your personal sweet spot without driving yourself crazy. But before we begin, do me a favor and put a heart in the comments so YouTube can help keep spreading this message to more people who need to hear it. First, let's acknowledge the simplest answer. If you spend time in the carnivore community, you'll often hear people say, just eat until you're comfortably full. That's it. Your body has built-in hunger cues, and over time, those cues get smarter. If you're listening, your body will naturally pull the plug when you've had enough protein. And for a lot of people, that works beautifully. If you're eating real food, especially fatty meat, it's hard to overeat protein long-term. Your appetite for protein shuts off before you get into trouble. But here's the catch. That answer alone doesn't serve everyone. Some people need more guidance and some people need the numbers. So let's talk about why this question even matters in the first place. Protein isn't just about building muscle. It's about repair, hormones, enzymes, immune function, and yes, your muscles too. If you don't get enough protein, you risk sarcopenia, which is the age-related loss of muscle mass. Sarcopenia isn't just a fancy word. It means fragility, falls, fractures, and even a shorter life. And while most guidelines out there tell you the amount of protein you need to avoid deficiency, they rarely talk about the amount you need to thrive. That's a big difference between not being deficient and being optimal. Think of it this way. You can survive on the bare minimal, but surviving isn't the same thing as thriving. Now, who are the people that actually need to know those protein numbers? Some of you are what I call data people. You love numbers. You track your steps, your heart rate, your sleep. You probably know how many miles your car goes on a tank of gas. For you, just saying eat until you're full is not enough. You need precision. Another group that needs the numbers are athletes and bodybuilders. Their muscles are under constant stress and repair. Then there are older adults. As we age, we become less efficient at using protein. So we actually need more, not less. People recovering from surgery, illness, or injury also need more protein to rebuild and heal. And finally, anyone who feels tired, weak, or is losing muscle despite eating may benefit from knowing their numbers. For everyone else, the trust your hunger approach might be just fine. So let's get into how those numbers are actually calculated. When I was in my master's program in nutrition and functional medicine, we spent a lot of time talking about protein needs. And here's what surprised me. The RDA, the recommended daily allowance, suggests 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. But that's the bare minimum to avoid deficiency. It's not the optimal amount. If you weigh 150 pounds, which is about 68 kilograms, that's only about 55 grams of protein a day. That's maybe two chicken breasts or less than a pound of ground beef. Do you really think that's enough to optimize your health? Probably not. Many experts now suggest a more optimal range of 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight and even up to 2.2 grams per kilogram, which is about one gram per pound of body weight for highly active people. So using the same 150 pound person, that's closer to 80 to 150 grams of protein a day. That's a big difference. And here's another layer. Some recommend calculating based on lean body mass, not total body weight, because fat tissue doesn't need protein, but muscle does. So if you have access to a body composition scan, you can calculate protein needs more precisely. And here's an important pearl for women, especially postmenopausal women. Protein needs often go up. Losing estrogen can accelerate muscle loss. So protein and resistance training become your best defense. Now let's pause for a second. What happens if you don't eat enough protein? Sarcopenia, like I mentioned. 
but also delayed wound healing, weakened immune function, increased hunger and cravings. There's a theory called the protein leverage hypothesis that says when you don't eat enough protein, your body will keep pushing you to eat more calories until you get the protein it needs. That often shows up as snacking, cravings, and overeating carbs. You might also notice brittle nails, hair thinning, or poor recovery from workouts. Protein is like the construction crew for your body. If you don't give them enough building materials, they'll start tearing down old houses, your muscles, to reuse the parts. Not exactly the renovation you were hoping for. On the flip side, let's address the fear I often hear. Can you eat too much protein? Won't it kick me out of ketosis? Won't it hurt my kidneys? First, the idea that protein automatically turns into sugar through gluconeogenesis is a myth. Gluconeogenesis is demand driven. Your body only makes as much glucose as it needs. Eating more protein doesn't mean you suddenly turn into a walking bakery. Second, kidneys. If you already have advanced kidney disease, then yes, protein may need to be adjusted. But in healthy people, higher protein intake does not cause kidney damage. In fact, in my obesity medicine clinic, patients often improve their health when they increase protein. They get leaner, stronger, and more metabolically resilient. So how do you apply all of this? I like to give people two main options. Option one is the hunger-based approach. If you're eating fatty cuts of meat, eggs, fish, and real food, just eat until you're satisfied. Most people will naturally hit the right amount. Option two is the data-driven approach. Use a calculator. Take your weight in kilograms. Multiply by 1.6 and aim for that number in grams per day as a starting point. Then adjust based on your energy, muscle mass, recovery, and satiety. For example, a sedentary person might land around 70 to 100 grams per day. An active person might need 120 to 150 grams. Athletes could push past 150 to 200 grams. And if you're losing muscle or not recovering, it's a sign you need more. But here's the key. Bio-individuality matters. Not everyone thrives on the same number. Genetics, activity level, metabolic health, and hormones all play a role. I once worked with a patient who thought she was getting enough protein because she was eating a small chicken breast at dinner every night, but she was tired, weak, and losing muscle. Once she increased her intake to about 120 grams a day, everything changed. Her energy improved, her strength came back, and she felt younger. That's the difference between minimum and optimal. So what should you do? Start by avoiding deficiency. At the very least, aim for 0.8 grams per kilogram. But know that most people do better with more, somewhere between 1.2 and 2 grams per kilogram. If you're carnivore, you may find that your body regulates just fine without tracking, as long as you're eating to satiety. If you're keto or low carb and you like data, calculate your range and track for a few weeks. Then let your body's feedback guide you. Remember, Protein is not just food. It's the raw material for your body's construction projects, repairing tissues, building hormones, and powering your immune system. Don't send your construction crew to the job site without enough tools. So to wrap this up, protein is too important to leave to chance, but it's also not something you need to obsess over. You have two valid approaches. Trust your hunger if you're eating real food or calculate your numbers if you like data or fall into a group that needs extra care, like athletes or older adults. Either way, the goal is to avoid deficiency. Aim for optimal and listen to your body along the way. Don't be afraid of protein. It's one of the best allies you'll have for health and longevity. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Do you track your protein or do you eat until you're full? Comment below with your approach. And if you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe and share this with a friend who's always asking about protein because now you know how to find your protein sweet spot and you have the tools to protect your muscle, your metabolism, and your health for years to come. I'll see you in the next video.